what I'd like to talk about related to that uh, subject of reliability and reputation. So we're talking about reputation. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this part of, uh, I've been actually thinking about this for a while. Just based on things that are going on out in the market right now, and I'll talk a little bit about that, uh, on reputation and reliability. Uh, because, I mean, it goes without saying those are really important things to know and to be aware of. So I know that's like the obvious statement of the day, but I'm going to dig into it a little bit as in terms of multifamily and investing in real estate because uh, there's some things you need to know and you need to be aware of when it comes to reliability and reputation um, that are huge. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a podcast uh, as well because I think it is super important. Uh, I think a lot of us, including myself at times, don't take this seriously, as serious as you should or as I should, uh, because it's a really big deal. And so, uh, you know, a, a com so let's kind of go back to some things that you guys have been asking me about uh, I get emails uh, from uh, our you know, folks that tune in and watch or listen to the podcast or on my mailing list. And, uh, you know, DarrenGarman.com. Uh, and part of it's because of some of the books that they've downloaded, that you guys have downloaded, uh, those listening to me or those watching the video. Uh, you know, part of it kind of comes from that. So you start reading and you start thinking, oh, God, that's, I got a question about that. Because if there's a constant theme uh, between the lines with almost all of my books, almost all of them, it has to do with reliability and reputation. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get away from the obvious and saying, yeah, you got to have a good reputation. You know, my dad always told me I needed a good reputation. So I'm going to get away from the obvious kind of things regarding that and, and give you some real world examples of reliability and reputation and on how big of a deal it is. Because when we come full circle, what I'm going to talk to you about is going to get you involved in owning your own multifamily property, whether you're going to own it privately and you're going to be like active owner, or whether you're going to be passive and actually finally get involved in something rather than being passed over. Okay. So um, I get, I would say, a dozen inquiries a week from a dozen or so. Well, it's actually probably more than that. It's probably closer to 20. So I get 20 inquiries a week from investors wanting to or wanting information on being involved in what we do here. Okay, so maybe, maybe they're interested in being one of my partners in uh, an upcoming uh, apartment community we're going to purchase. Okay, maybe they're going to be a um, active investor. They're, they want me to help them find something uh, to purchase maybe here somewhere in maybe eastern Iowa somewhere, or maybe they want to help me kind of coach them through some things and help them out where, with, with this wherever they are. And so there's always a lot of interest, a lot of interest, okay? And so what happens, though, is out of those 20, that inquire to me, that get in touch with me, let's just say one, at least weekly, less than one half of those people turn into um, investors that I want to work with, okay? Um, investors that I want to deal with, uh, less than half. Why is that? It comes down to reliability. They're not reliable. How do you know they're not reliable, Darren? Well, one of the things that I do is I will take people through, once they said their interest, I'll kind of take them through an, I call it an obstacle course. Okay. 
So it's a, it's a series of a few emails, a few questions to them uh, about seeing how serious they are. Okay? Seeing how serious they are. Because all of the investors that contact me say they're serious. Um, why wouldn't they? Um, and all of them say they're ready to go and they've got capital ready and all of that. Well, I take them through basically a four, really five step obstacle course. Uh, some emails they've got to answer, some information that I'm asking them to send to me, as well as a couple of very quick phone conversations. Okay. So really five steps. Five easy steps. And if you get through the five easy steps with me, then we're on our way. You're in. Okay, you're in pretty much. And it might surprise you, and it might surprise those watching or those listening to this podcast, that um, half, one half of out of 20 pass and get through the litmus test or the obstacle course. And again, this isn't anything difficult, guys. And, and no, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what it is and take you through it. Um, if you're with me now, which many of you are, um, and those of you here now with me, some of you know what the obstacle, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but if you can't get through those five things, what it tells me is you're not reliable. Okay, you're not reliable. And so if you're not reliable, just in that, just that small obstacle course, process, it takes about two weeks to go through. I already know. I already know that it's not, it's, it just isn't going to work out. It's just not going to work out. Um, because you're not reliable. And so... Um, I highly recommend you have some kind of obstacle course yourself, whether you're putting your own partnership together, whether you're buying a business and you're having some people going with you, whether you're, you know, doing, there's a lot of different applications to this, not just financial. You should have your own little obstacle course to see how reliable people will be. Take them through three or four steps, little tests that you've got. You know, send him an email. Hey, can you fill this out and send this back to me by Friday? Sure. You don't get it. Okay? You don't get it. Oh, I know. Something could come up. There could be this or that. So maybe you go to step two and you take him through another little thing. Maybe it's a quick phone conversation. Hey, let's have a quick phone conversation 3 p.m. next Tuesday. They don't show up. Or they're 20 minutes late and they're texting you wanting to know. I mean, you already know. And this isn't me like being on the, my high horse here, but most people are dysfunctional with this. So you got to get these people out of the way. Take them through a five, four or five step little obstacle course. That's what I do. Because it tells me who's going to be reliable or not. And we only have so much time in the day, don't we? We only have so much time. And we can't be spending time with folks that aren't going to be reliable. Not only is it a waste of time, it can get you into trouble. It can cause you problems. And that's not to say every single person that turns out and gets through my obstacle course is super reliable, because there's a few that aren't. They, they kind of get through that, but then some down, you know, they go lame after a while. I'll give you a quick example of that here in just a second. They go lame. But just to get through there in the first place is a big deal. So I get half of the people, 0.5 out of 20 people that contact me a week, that I'm like, okay, they're in. And by the way, that's great news for everybody. Great news for them, they're not wasting time. Great news for me, I'm not wasting my time with them. Uh, because the wrong way to think about this is, geez, don't you want a whole bunch of people contacting you and hundreds and hundreds a day? And sure, that's kind of ideal, but I already know out of a lot of those people, there's just going to be a small amount, small, 
that I'm going to want to work with, going to want to work with, and they're going to want to work with me. We're on the same page about stuff. We understand each other pretty well. We resonate with each other. Okay? So reliability. It's a big deal. So that's kind of the reliability going into maybe deciding who you're going to be doing some business with, who you want to let into your world, whatever your world is. Um, so there's that. Then there's the people that are already in your world that you've got to really pay close attention to in terms of, okay, you don't have like an obstacle course for them. They're already in there, dear. I mean, I, I can't, you know, they're already with me. I'm already doing business with them. There may be a partner of mine. Um, you know, there may be an employee. What well, they're already in. Well, you need to be mindful. You don't let your guard down. Just because now they're in your world, now that has to get ramped up a little bit more and your expectations need to be higher. Because again, you only have so much time. You only have so many things that you can accomplish in a day. And so why would you want to be spending it with people that are not going to be reliable and have the reputation for being reliable? You don't. You can't. And nor do you want to. So you've got to be on guard with this and can't let your guard down with people in your world right now that have proven to be unreliable and have a reputation for being unreliable. So here, so here's the truth. So I have um, uh, uh, apartment community owners and investors that I know I'm not even going to spend time talking to and working with because they are unreliable. And these are people already in my world. Hey, Darren, can you work with me on this? I'm not going to. Hey, Darren, can we look at buying this property with your... No, I'm not going to. Hey, you know, I might want to work with you in getting some coaching coming up. Um, can you send me some info? I'm not going to. Because they've already proven that I can't, they, they can't be relied upon. So if you've got people not only that want to enter your world, okay, that you're kind of considering, should I, should I get involved with these guys? Should I have them get involved with me? On the surface, it might look pretty cool. It might look pretty great. Whether you're looking at that or the people already in it, you need to be kind of having this thought in your mind all the time on, man, because you know right now, if you're watching and you're listening to me right now, you know who the people in your world are right now, whether it's business or personal, that are freaking reliable. You know. You could write them down right now. And you can write those people down that are not. And so why are you spending time with those people that are not? Yeah, sometimes you have to. Sometimes you kind of forced to. Sometimes you, you can't you know, get out, but as little time as possible. But a lot of us make the mistake of wasting time with unreliable people who have reputations that you already know, especially if that reputation is with you of being freaking unreliable. So if you look at me, my partners know I'm freaking reliable. And this isn't me getting on any kind of, you know, high horse. Uh, I'm not doing that. That's not my point. But they know I'm reliable. Ask them. I'm reliable. If I say something, I'm going to do it. More about that in a second, by the way. If I say something, I'm going to damn well do it. If I tell them something, that's what's damn well going to happen, whether it's good or bad. I'm reliable. And I have high expectations for people around me to be just as damn reliable. I'm not expecting perfection, okay? I'm not expecting, you know, everything to go 100% terrific every single day. You know, we are human beings and things happen. But this is a big deal, and we do not exercise this enough in our own lives, especially when it comes to business, and especially when it comes to multifamily. So think about it. Partners. Right? You got a list of people that you already know have a reputation for being unreliable and have a reputation for being reliable as partners. How about vendors? 
How about vendors you've worked with? You already know. I got my list. <clears throat> These people suck. <laughs> They're not reliable. These people are great. Reliable. And, you know, that includes vendors, that includes management vendors, that includes maintenance, that includes uh, lenders, that includes all of that. I got my list. Who's really reliable? Who's not? Why am I, why am I, I'm not spending time with those who aren't? I can't. I can't. And the list is changing a lot. It's not set in stone, it changes. So I got like some partners of mine that they're like super reliable one day, they get over to the naughty list the next day. Okay? Um, it just happens. Uh, I got vendors, they're super reliable, they go over there, or sometimes maybe they're not reliable. And maybe, hey, you know, um, we blew that over at this property, we blew it, man. Can you give me one more shot with your next? Okay, maybe they might make the migration back over, and maybe I'll give them a chance. But I'm not going out of my way to give them a chance. So a lot of us don't think about this enough. And here's kind of where it comes full circle. Not only in terms of saving time, energy, money, but also saving your time and your reputation. Because the people that you deal with indirectly affects your reliability and your reputation. Think about what I just said. Think about it. You know, it's the old, you're, you're, you're like the sum of the five people you hang out with most of the time. You know, even though some of your people you hang out with or some of the people in your circle are doing bad things and you're not, you're still going to be thought of somebody that does bad things. That's how it works. So from a collateral damage standpoint, you can't be around these people. You can't have them involved with what you're doing because now it makes you look bad. It affects you. Okay? So the last one to the last three properties we've purchased over the last two years, um, and it'd be a total of like 400 units, something like that. Between three properties, like 400 units. There's a couple others, and let's just say 400 units. The one of the main reasons that they chose to deal with me, that they contacted me. They contacted me and said, hey, we want to get a deal put together with you is because of what I'm talking about. I have a reputation of being reliable. And in their mind, they have a reputation of getting deals closed. That's what they're thinking. I'm reliable to them to get deals closed. Matter of fact, I've never not closed on a deal. Never. That I've handed a contract. I never have. I've never not closed on a deal that I've handed a contract. I never have. Okay? They know this. They know I'm reliable. They know I've got the reputation for being reliable, so they call me. They're not going to call anybody that has any kind of reputation that is any, just an inkling of unreliability. They're not. Why would they? Waste of time. Don't We can't take that chance. So one of the things that bugs the shit out of me, I don't like it. I appreciate it from a seller standpoint, by the way. And I've talked about this in other podcasts and other places, is the call for offers. Okay, so, you know, brokers have properties for sale. They market them for like a month. And then they have a call for offers. All offers are due on a certain day. And from a seller standpoint, it's a great thing, by the way, because you've got people competing against each other. From a buying standpoint, it's the worst way to buy real estate. I've said it. I'll say it again. I've said it many other times. It's the worst way. Um, but 
you get, let's say you submit an offer and you're competing with people to buy a property, which many of you have been involved in. Many people listening and watching have been involved in this too. You're competing with people. You want to be in. You want to be one of the people. You want to buy it. So you're competing. Do you want to know one of the main, main reasons you will get chosen over everybody else that's competing against you? Your freaking reliability track record. You may have an offer higher than the guy right next to you. You may have a closing time. You may want to. You may be able to close sooner than the person next to you competing at your. Comp you may be coming to the table with all cash, but the person next to you is getting a whole bunch of financing. But if that person has a better track record of reliability and a reputation for reliability, it's an easy decision for the seller to make. It's easy. So some of the examples that I've given during this podcast and this meeting that we were having, um, you know, some of it's kind of out there a little bit, you know, in terms of bigger deals, transactions, and but it really comes down to only dealing with people that have proven to be reliable and spending your time with them. And there's a lot of different ways to judge this, but you need to have some kind of a system, some kind of a process to judge. Some kind of obstacle course is what I call it, to take them through. One of my mentors, who's also an investor and in, owns some property with us, one of my partners too, mentor of mine, Anytime he decides to do business with anybody, he takes them through an obstacle course. He took me through the obstacle course. I didn't know it at the time. He told me later. And, you know, there's like four things he does. And if you pass those four obstacle course things, you now have a possibility of doing business with this person. But not until you pass them. Because if you don't, He's already, he's already saved a whole bunch of time, effort, and energy. So what kind of obstacle course do you have now in terms of people being let into your world that have a reputation for being reliable? Not perfect, not 100% perfect, but reliable. Hell, I make mistakes all the time, okay? But reliability, number one. Number two, people already in your world what do you have in place or what can you think about putting in place as kind of your obstacle course with them to start to separate the reliable people from the unreliable people and start the process of separating? Because after you've gone through that process, you're going to find the world is much brighter, bigger, and it gives you more of what you're looking for because now you're pretty much dealing with those folks that are reliable. And that's where your time is spent. Okay? So, think about this. Um, in your world, think about it. And kind of go through some of the steps that I've mentioned here. I promise you'll be glad that you did. And, by the way, once they violate that, whether they're coming in your world or whether they're in your world, they got to go. They got to go. And once again, you're just moving around, reliable, unreliable, and working with those that are worth your time, which is so, so very, very precious.